Hi guys, welcome back to my channel where the gnomes live. This is Sharon Oyella and this is part two of our clam octopus slash crochet caddy. My goodness, if you missed part one, that link is in the pin comment below. Let's get started. All right, so I'm adding some mushrooms to the top of my clam. Now my, my son thought it would be really cool if there was coral added and that would have been awesome, but because I am a crocheter and I also build for gnomes, I opted for mushrooms. So of course I did the foil and then I put the clay around that. Now the stem, I added these lines to match the clam shell. Then I added three more to the front. Now these are just simple shaped fungus and I'm just shaping them to the clam shell. And then I'm gonna add some lines in the front as well. And I should add that I did not form these around any foil. They're just straight clay. Before I permanently attach those, I'm going to paint the octopus. I changed my mind three times. I started with this burgundy color and it would have been perfect had I not put that texture in there because with that texture, once that paint was dry, he looked like a strawberry. So I decided for yellow instead. I kind of missed the yellow actually. Then I changed my mind and went for blue. And the blues I used was this tropical blue and a navy blue, and I mixed those two colors together to get a little bit darker than that light blue. And then over top of that, I did some dry brushing of the light blue. I also did um, some shadowing out with the navy blue. Uh, around some of the edges and around parts of the arms, I did put some hunter green. Very, very light dry brushing of hunter green, right where I'm pointing at there. And if you take a closer look, anywhere there's a dip in the body, like crevices, dips, little shadowy places, that's where I put in the dry brushing of the darker colors, like the navy blue and the hunter green. And I just played around with those colors, just back and forth. And then over top where parts of the body is protruding, I did the dry brushing of the lighter color. So I used the tropical blue, and I believe I did do a little tiny bit of white as well. And this is my dry brushing brush. I believe it's called a feather brush and uh, you just dip your brush in, you get the majority of the paint off and then you just lightly go over where you want to add a little bit of that pigment. And to seal it all in and give it a nice glossy finish, I used the Varathane. This is a crystal clear water-based Varathane and it went over the mushrooms as well. On the suckers I used white and a feather brush and just lightly went over top and it picks up all the protruding edges and just helps those suckers stand out. That worked out really well. But let's do the eyes. I've already painted them white and now I'm gonna put navy blue in like slits across. I just looked up octopus eyes and they have like slits going across. So I did the navy blue and then once that was dry, I outlined that with red paint. And then I put a little dot of white in there as well in the for the pupils. I thought that looked really cool. And now I'm gonna take some dimensional magic. Um, any varnish would work actually, but dimensional magic, I've used this a long time ago. I wanted to use it again because I have it on hand. So I'm just gonna um, put a layer of this down on top of the eyeball and then it needs to set for about three hours. All right, so let's paint our mushrooms and then attach them. So I did the stems with a cream color and then dry brushed on hunter green and the caps I did with hunter green. Once that was dry, I did dry brush on a lighter green and also lightly dry brushed on a bit of cream as well, just to give the mushroom caps uh, some t more texture. You can see the holes on top of the mushroom caps there. I did the same thing uh, for the caps that I did for the octopus arms. And to attach them, I'm using E6000 around the outer edge of the stem. And then in the center of the stem, I'm gonna add quite a bit of hot glue. And the hot glue will just hold that mushroom stem in place while the E6000 dries. And then around that, I put a bead of tacky glue and into the tacky glue, I put some flocking. Now I'm gonna show you in the next clip what flocking is. You can also use yarn. So it comes in a package like this. This was given to me. I would never buy it because I can make my own with yarn. And I'm gonna show you real quick here. I just wrapped it around my hand, cut it into little tiny bits. And there's the package stuff in my hand already. And here's the stuff I made with the yarn. You can't even tell the difference. The only difference here is the color. So you can literally make any color flocking of your choice. And of course I attached all the rest of the mushrooms the exact same way. So E6000 and hot glue and then edged them out with some of that flocking. I also added in a little bit of this, I'm not sure of the name, I think it's Old Man's Beard. I could be wrong though. Anyway, I found that in the, in the woods on a stick. So I just took some of it off. It was already dry 
and I just attached it with uh, tacky glue just to add some more texture, a little bit more interest. And then for the spots on my mushrooms, I'm using textured paint, which is uh, baking soda that I mixed into cream colored paint. You can also use baby powder and you can Google how to do that. And then with using the back end of a paintbrush, just added, added in the spots. And for the top of the foot, I added in these three mushrooms. Now, I made these years ago, and I actually have a video here on YouTube, and I'll put that link in the pin comment below. But I added these with uh, tacky glue and a little bit of moss around to hold them in place. And I'm sure you saw the holes on top of the mushroom cap. Now, I had done that before I baked the mushroom caps, and that was for the pins. I also had a couple of holes here above the eyebrows. And then I found uh, some sponges that I had in my stash. I forgot all about them, but one fit perfectly in his arm here. And that makes a, a much easier pin cushion, much uh, faster. And then we got the scissors and the crochet hook. And now we have the caddy on the outside, which is very adorable and useful. On the inside of the mouth, I decided to add in some sea glass. I thought that was fitting. Uh, sea glass, some shells, and some uh, rocks that I found over the years that I've been collecting. Look at this little rock here. I just found this the other day. It looks like a footprint. And I was debating, should I make a necklace out of that or what? But I ended up sticking it inside there. And in the mouth, I did add a piece of felt. So I didn't even need to paint that black part inside the mouth. <laughs> I ended up using felt there. Oh, well. Now I'm just going to use uh, E6000 to attach all of my pieces. This is clear drying E6000, so it works out well with sea glass. After that was dry, I did add varnish here and there just to give a more of a wet look inside the mouth. And then I realized I needed a stitch marker as well, so I put a few together on video for you. And if you want to see how I've done that, you can go to part three. That should be popping up on your screen. And if it isn't, it'll be in the pinned comment below. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.